This week we will go over a simple UVM Hello World example. Now as you can tell from this block diagram it's not quite as simple as a uh, Hello World example in other languages. Uh, there is a few other components um, so it is uh, simple yet complicated enough where it can be a base for an actual UVM test bench. Uh, so first let's go over how to run this code. So this example is available at EDA Playground in the examples menu over here, UVM Hello World. And um, one of the things you can do is um, you can just run the example by itself or you can click this open EP wave after run button and run it uh, so that it generates the waveforms after it completes. Now in this example, and the waveforms are coming up, as you can see uh, things are toggling here. Basically in this example we have a uh, device under test and then we have a sequencer and a driver that's going to drive some transactions to this device under test. And uh, you were able to see the, the traffic for these transactions here in the waves. So let's start from the top. Let's go over exactly what all of these components are and uh, how they're created and why they're here. So at the very top here we have a module, a top module. And this top module is in Testbench SV. It's right here. And inside that module we have a couple things. We have our device under test and we have an interface. And so our device under test is our design uh, over here, DUT, and it's basically a dummy design. And all it's going to do is basically whenever there's a clock edge and we're not under reset, it's going to print out a message. And from the run log, you can see that it did print out a bunch of messages. Basically, whenever um, the device under test received a transaction, it print out a message with the information on that transaction. And as you can see, if you take the first one, 173.95, this matches what we see in the waves. Um, command 173.95. So this all matches. So next to the uh, DUT, we also have the interface. An interface in System Verilog is synthesizable. So it is part. It is a considered a design component. Uh, in this case, all it is is uh, a bunch of wires, but um, in a real interface you're probably going to have a clocking block. Now in order to keep this example simple uh, I would not include a clocking block in here but that is something uh, something to investigate in the future. So on the design side we have an interface while on the verification side we actually can't use the same interface because on the verification side we have dynamic class components um, and in order to connect to this interface they need a virtual interface which is basically a handle which is like a pointer in software to this interface. So on the verification side we're going to use a virtual interface to effectively connect up or uh, use this interface over here. Okay so in the top module and you can see over here um, interface, designer to test, then we have a clock generator, so we basically use this interface and drive the clock. So the clock gets driven directly uh, from the top level in this example. And then here's where the virtual interface comes into play. What we do over here is we take this virtual interface, the pointer to, to the actual interface, and we put it in the UVM config database so that it can be later retrieved by another uh, UVM class and then we start the test. Uh, this run test is a UVM method so under the hood what it does is it finds a, a test called uh, my test and then it starts the UVM phasing which goes through UVM phases like start uh, like uh, build phase, connect phase, run phase and others. And the last thing it does, uh, I'm sorry, the last thing the top module does is it dumps waves. So that's how you, we were able to see uh, these waves over here. Alright, let's go to the next level. So we've got the top and then we have my test. This is a test that we specified that we wanted to run. So in our example it's contained in this uh, my test bench package. So using packages is commonly uh, is a pretty good practice to kind of separate um, different parts of the environment. 
So in this case, let's go to my test, and it's down here. There's, there's three classes in this package. So the test is pretty simple, and you can tell it's pretty simple over here because all it does is contain the environment. Uh, so you, in, the environment uh, is over here, and then we basically have a simple constructor. In the build phase, we create the environment. And then the right run phase, well, it's pretty straightforward. The run phase is actually where uh, the simulation happens. In this case, all that happens is we print out hello world. And we print it as a warning, just so you can see it a little better. And down here, you can see hello world. All right, so that was my test. And in this very simple test bench, all it did is create the environment. And environment, likewise, is going to be pretty straightforward, because all the environment does is it contains an agent. Now, in a real complete test bench, you may have multiple agents, you may have um, multiple higher level sequencers that control these multiple agents. So in a, real, in a real test bench, you may have a lot more going on here. But it's always good to start with these basic uh, UVM tests and UVM ENV uh, classes and then build, up, use, uh, build on them later. So we have an agent. And by the way, I didn't mention this, but this is uh, this is typical um, syntax to create components in UVM. The reason this syntax is being used is so that um, to make the test bench flexible, so that way we can override uh, the actual type of of environment or agent in this case that gets created. So this is this is this is used here for flexibility for the future. All right, let's go on from the, the environment onto the agent. So an agent, um, in, in a classical sense, contains a sequencer which um, runs a sequence, which then sends transactions down to a driver. Uh, the driver then drives them on the bus. And in this case, the driver is going to use this virtual interface to actually wiggle the pins uh, that get driven to the device under test. Now, traditionally, the agent also contains a monitor, and that block would be here, but it's not, because in this example, uh, we don't have a monitor. Um, just to keep things simple, we just have a sequencer and a driver here. Uh, so let's go over the agent class. So we have our driver here, and uh, a, few, a few words about the sequencer and the sequence. So a sequence, as you can see, the agent has, this, has the sequencer, and during the build phase, it creates a driver, and it also create a creates a sequencer. Now, there's nothing particularly special about this sequencer. As you can see, it is a UVM sequencer class parameterized with my transaction. And my transaction is basically the transaction that's going to be driven down to the driver. Uh, so a sequencer is a, effectively completely a UVM class in this particular example. And basically, the reason for its existence is that it is, it is created during the build phase, so it is part of the UVM hierarchy. Next, in the connect phase, what we do is we connect up the driver to the sequencer. So that way, uh, the driver and the sequencer have this connection uh, represented by this arrow here. And through this connection, they, the, um, my transaction um, instances will be sent down. Uh, so the sequencer is needed because it's effectively a, a once it's created once, and it maintains the connection between um, the sequencer and the driver. And then we have the sequence. So a sequence, unlike the sequencer, can get created any times, multiple times. You can have multiple types of sequences, and the sequence, when it's created. Uh, when it started, it gets started on the sequencer. And the reason it gets started on the sequencer is so that the sequence can then use this connection to send down uh, the transaction items down to the driver. Um, so it's a little, it's a little uh, complicated here, but uh, hopefully, um, hopefully it's not too hard to figure out. So in this run phase, when we actually run the test, we create a single sequence and then we start it on the sequencer. All right, so let's move on to the, um, the transaction item and the sequence. So the transaction item is pretty simple. It's uh, basically a, a contains 
a command address and data. It's connect contains a few um, a few fields. The sequence, on the other hand, the sequence uh, the important part of it is the body, and that's where the sequence actually runs. And these uh, it calls start item and finish item, and these are the standard um, standard methods that get called to send the transaction uh, down to the driver. So the transaction gets created, in this case it's called a rec, and then we randomize uh, the command address and data. Now because this example runs on model sim, model sim does not support the randomize method. Um, so here we use the classic uh, randomization techniques, the, the dollar u random that's available in, in classic Verilog um, to randomize. And as you can see when we do see this transaction, they're all randomized. So it is it is working as expected. Alright, so we create this request and then we basically send it down to the driver. So let's take a look at the driver. So the driver is going to be actually be wiggling the pins down on the interface. So let's see how it does that. So first of all, uh, it's got the build phase and in this build phase, now remember, um, it has to pull out the virtual interface. Uh, so remember, this is the virtual interface and where does it get it? Well, if you can recall, we actually put it in the configuration database right here in the top initial. So before we ran, ran the test, we actually put this, vir this virtual interface into the configuration database and the driver pulls it out right here with this get call. So that uh, it pulls it out and it has it and then during the write and run phase, uh, first it um, toggles the reset and you can see this in the waves. Uh, the reset goes up for a little while and then and then drops down. And then it has a forever loop, a loop that runs forever. This is typical behavior for a driver. Uh, you want it to be in a forever loop and then every time through the for forever loop it looks for the next request coming down basically through the sequencer. Uh, so it's going to get this request and then it's going to put these thing, put these fields on the bus and it's going to toggle the clock and then it's going to say that it's done. So and this happens eight times because in the body of the sequence we repeat this eight times and you can see down here we'll have eight of these messages and the same thing that you can see uh, on the waves as well. Um, Alright, so hopefully this was, uh, this was helpful to you guys and one of the things that um, you know I encourage you to do with this example is as you're learning UVM you've got a basically working example here pretty uh, you know not too simple but not too complicated environment so it's pretty easy to go ahead and add to this environment and try different features of UVM and different other classes and perhaps add a monitor uh, things like that so I definitely encourage to use this example for uh, future experimentation